Tonight, federal prosecutors say they have proof on tape that reputed Chicago mob boss Sam Carlisi is a threat to society, and they want him kept behind bars until his racketeering trial. At today's detention hearing, on charges that Carlisi and others used violence to collect gambling debts, prosecutors played audio tapes. It was a conversation between mobsters Mario Renone and Lenny Patrick. Renone was fearful that Carlisi and his alleged crony Jimmy Marcello wanted him killed. It was Rudy Prada and Louis Messina, and they were both ducking down and hiding. Now, I know both of these guys, Len. They would have waved to me. If they were supposed to be there, Jimmy would have told me. Jimmy told me nobody was going to be around. He told me nobody, Len. So I know they're going to clip me. See, I know it. The conversation was about Renone's assignment to kill a mobster named Anthony Didino, and Renone suspected it was a Carlisi setup to murder him. The government's seeking to prove that Sam Carlisi has been head of the Chicago mob for several years and is capable of ordering the murders of his rivals. He's considered the mastermind of a Chicago mob street crew, but tonight, Rocco, Ernest, Infelice, and two colleagues in crime are heading to prison. Infelice is sentenced to 63 years, Robert Bellavia gets 30 years, and Louis Marino gets 28 years, all convicted of running a huge gambling and juice loan operation in Cook and Lake Counties. Channel 5's Phil Rogers has more. A rare scene played out in a federal courtroom. Convicted mob gambling boss Rocco Infelice at his own sentencing accusing Judge Ann Williams of being biased, siding with the government throughout his trial. I believe in law and order, justice in the jury system, said Infelice, but these prosecutors brought witnesses worse than the defendants they were trying. We didn't get a fair trial. We were fighting three prosecutors here, and you were the fourth one. Nonetheless, Judge Williams gave Infelice what amounts to a life sentence and potential life terms for his co-defendants. 63 years for the 71-year-old Infelice, 30 for Robert Bellavia, 28 for Louis Marino. Infelice is seen here with one-time associate turned government informant William Jehoda, discussing the murder of a competitor which Jehoda said Infelice and his co-defendants plotted and carried out. The jury could not reach a verdict on murder charges, only conspiracy. But Judge Ann Williams assigned the stiffest penalties allowed, declaring the Infelice Street Crew an organization that existed for a number of purposes, all of them illegal. Afterward, defense attorney Patrick Tewitt picked up where his client left off, saying the judge had sentenced Infelice for a crime which the jury could not agree on, and that that would be the basis of his appeal. It subverts the whole jury system to say, jury didn't find him guilty, but I'm going to find him guilty, and I'm going to give him a sentence. His sentence should be about six years for gambling and those things that the jury found him guilty of. Self-proclaimed mob princess Antoinette Giancana led the cheers for Infelice in the courtroom, declaring Judge Williams had singled the three out for harsh treatment just because of who they were. I think there's two kinds of justices, and there's justices for the alleged mobster, and there's other justices for other people. I think uh, it's an injustice to my people. Phil Rogers, Channel 5 News. Now the last defendant in the case, Salvatore De Laurentiis, is supposed to be sentenced sometime next week. Tonight, the firing of a city foreman has all the ingredients of a classic Chicago political scandal. Consider the elements in the case of Chris Spina. It involves streets and sanitation, a Chicago City Department that's been rocked by allegations of wrongdoing before. It involves the First Ward and a tie to organized crime. In this case, reputed mob boss Joseph Lombardo. Channel 5 political editor Dick Kay is here with the details. Dick? Ron and Joan chauffeuring reputed mob boss Joseph Lombardo and drawing overtime pay is not the job of a city worker. The city says that's what streets and sanitation foreman Chris Spina was doing, that and some other things, so the city is moving to fire Spina. Joseph Joey the Clown Lombardo reportedly might be the new head of the Chicago mob. He was paroled last November after doing 10 years for conspiring to bribe a U.S. senator, defrauding a Teamsters pension fund, and skimming from a Las Vegas casino. In April of this year, Lombardo was being chauffeured by Chris Spina, a city laborer's foreman, according to City Inspector General Alexander Versturis. He was observed chauffeuring reputed mob boss Joseph Lombardo, and at the time he was observed doing this, he was on city time, it was on a weekend, he was getting time and a half of his $20 an hour salary. Uh, he wasn't in his work location or his work site, and I'm sure that's not what his job functions are, to go chauffeuring people around. Spina and Lombardo grew up in the West Side neighborhood called The Patch, and at one Lombardo hearing, Spina testified the reputed mobster was more respected than the local priest. Brustoris also says while Spina was working at the city facility at 39th and Iron, Spina allegedly used city workers and city equipment 
to take scrap metal from city yards, sold it, and kept the money for himself. And the Spingy Trucking Company on West Grand did hundreds of thousands of dollars in city business. Spina was part owner, but allegedly never disclosed his interest. Mayor Daly says corruption will not be tolerated. But we uncover. We're not afraid to uncover. We're not afraid to bring forward. We're not going to push it under the rug. Last week, police also raided the home of Spina's brothers, Anthony and John Jr., who are also city workers, and recovered several rifles, handguns, and some ammunition. John Spina says they were planted. I never had no guns. The only guns I had in my house was a BB gun. You're kidding. I swear to God. That's to my knowledge, I don't know where these guns came from. Chris Spina is on administrative leave with pay and the city is moving to fire him. The weapons charges against his brothers are police matters. The city's taking no action against them at this particular time. Ron and John. Thank you, Dick. Convicted mobster Rocco Ernest in police tonight faces a sentence of 63 years in prison. Since police is 71 years old, that could amount to a life sentence. Judge Ann Williams said she wanted to hand down a life sentence, but federal sentencing guidelines prevented her from doing that. The judge called in police the mastermind of a street crew involved in extortion, illegal gambling, intimidation, and murder. Also sentenced today, Robert Bellavia to 30 years, Louis Marino to 28 years.